two of this year's Weber Cup underway. Thomas Larson, the rookie, up against Chris Barnes, the American captain. Team Europe are desperate to get their second point on the board and start their fight back as they look to claw back a 6-1 lead for Team USA. Let's join our commentary team. Matt McNeil, Darren Tang are with Phil Yates. Hannah, thanks very much indeed. Yes, this is the, the newcomer to this Weber Cup environment up against the gnarled veteran with masses of experience. Are we going to see a continuation of USA superb play or will the Europeans begin to mount a fight back? Well, we're going to find out shortly, Phil. I, I think this first couple frames by Thomas Larson are going to be very, very important to kind of see how the Europeans are feeling out this different lane condition. It didn't look like he liked that one too much. Left off his hand. Be some of those rookie nerves. You know, and this was the spare he uh, chopped in the third frame of the uh, opening Baker match, so hopefully he can put that shot behind him and put the ball on line and just cover the... Uh, 3 6 10 with the ball. Well, that qualifies as a very, very worrying start. You know, Phil, and I, Darren can attest to this too as a bowler. You know, spare shooting is very mental. And once you miss a spare, especially on TV, and you're faced with it again, it's really, really hard once you lose that confidence to, to put the ball online the next time. Captain America taking advantage of the early open by Thomas Larson. This is eerily similar to the first match so far. Let's see if Thomas can get back on track. It's going to be really, really imperative here for Thomas to slow down, go through that mental process, really keep the hand relaxed, focus on your target, get it down the lane. It's better. Shot was located much better. I don't think he had a lot of confidence given the first shot. I think he was just trying to make sure the ball went in the right direction. Probably didn't get it off his hand the way he wanted to. But he's got to have a little more confidence knowing that he can get the ball going the right way now. He has won titles, Larson, in Abu Dhabi in 2013, in Kuwait in 2014, when he beat Don Barrett in the final there. He's European captain for these three days of competition. But Barnes has won all over the world, and he's winning today. Yeah, and that's just... Barnes is, is basically in... If there's a Hall of Fame in America, he's in it. Uh, he is just absolutely one of the top 10 bowlers in the last 20 years. And he's showing it right here, leading Team USA off to a marvelous start so far in the early goings of the evening session. Depressing for Larson. Right now there is doubting Thomas. Well, you know, he tried to get that ball to hook, so he sent it to the right earlier to try to get it to pick up. He sent it into that friction zone, and it just overhooked, and I think that's why he had a look of confused. You know, he was confused on his face. Finally makes the 3-6-10. I guess one out of three isn't bad. Definitely got to start somewhere. Now it's just Barnes' job to keep piling on. Don't let him back in. Take hold of this match. Barnes is a very, very accomplished match play player. And when I say that, he grew up bowling a lot of action in the United States. And that's man-to-man -man money games before he became a touring professional. So if there's 
anybody on Team USA who has a lot of experience bowling for money heads up. That's Chris Barnes. He's able to make a lot of big shots under the under the pressure. A very fortunate break there, knocking the 3-6 out of the, what could have been a 3-6, 3-4-6-7. Uh, now, just to make a little spare, so it was split. All right, all right. Easily converted. Right. That's a loss. Now Barnes has a 34-pin lead on Larson. Yeah, yeah. So, Matt, what do you think Thomas needs to do right here to get back on track and get lined up, get his hand in the right spot? What's, what's he need to do? Well, I, I think he's not far enough left. I don't think he has enough angle for the front part of the lanes. Chris is left of Thomas. And when a guy who's a little historically straighter than you, if he's playing left of you, that should give you an inclination that you are not far enough left. And that's what he did. And a much better result. We saw Thomas make that jump left. He got it to the right early with good ball speed. Definitely much better through the pins. I think he's going to need to make a lot more shots like that in order to get back in this match if Barnes is going to give him a chance. Absolutely, and he's certainly capable. That's All right, good shot. shot. No messenger that time. Not that time, but a, qu a quality shot after coming off the split. I think the split, he just he grabbed that one and just got a little slow, but... Uh, good quality shot coming off that split. It should be a, just a routine uh, spare for him. We've actually seen that a few times today, a little bit of overcompensation. You know, some players missing to the right and then overcompensating, going high the next shot. Um, Barnes did a really good job there, just you know, keeping things online. I think he missed a little further right than he would have liked, but probably do that overcompensation. So Larson eroding. Barnes' lead, still though, pretty healthy, 23 points. Well, you see the max scores up there, 277 if Barnes were to strike out, 254 for Thomas, but I think it's just imperative here for Thomas to make another good pass. Darren, he didn't get that ball right quick enough. It, it looked like to me that was just a little bit of a long, long left miss mm -hmm. where he just didn't feed it to that friction area soon enough to get the ball to set up. The ball just got behind the, behind the head pin. And generally, so far, when we've seen the ball get behind the head pin, it generally forces a wrap 10. And you have to think, you might have to change balls or something because with the ratios of these patterns, they're not terribly difficult. Getting to the hole hasn't seemed to be too much of an issue. And, um, you know, Barnes has made some some so-so shots that have still hit the pocket. Um, there's no reason why Thomas can't do the same thing and, and put up a couple of strikes. Here, EJ Tackett asking the ball to hit, and it did. Sometimes all you gotta do is talk to it a little bit. He just went to a little more rotation of the hand, Darren. When you rotate the ball and slow that speed down, you're able to get the ball a little cleaner down the lane and then get it to pop a little more on the back end. When, when you can get the ball to pop a little more, that's gonna get the six right into the 10 pin and cut it right in half. I'd have to assume he made a small move there. Um, judging that he got around a little more, he probably dropped his speed a little bit. Um, and I, that's just to stay ahead of the move. Badly needed from Thomas Larson. Now just past halfway in the contest. That was imperative. Nice shot from Thomas here. Ball getting into that swish zone. And it looks like he may have moved a little bit with his feet as well. I think we're going to see the players creeping further and further left as the matches progress. It's really the only way they can go. Oh, baby. Captain you know, America with a very nice break there on the nine pin. Absolutely. And that's a timeless game right there.
we're going to see that ball return come into play, Darren. Definitely. It's a little further up than it is traditionally. And uh, as we were watching the practice yesterday, we saw a lot of players kind of fidgeting with it, figuring out how they're going to shoot their spares if they slide that far left. Um, if they have to get into that zone to throw strike shots, how they're going to maneuver around it. It's very interesting to see. Well, that was Larson's third strike in these last four visits, but still trailing. It's looking like he's getting more comfortable now, but like we've mentioned all day, this last session, uh, Europe's just got to make those adjustments a lot faster. A pretty good effort by Chris. Six pin, third on your screen, just whistling right around the 10. When you get on conditions like this where the pocket is very accessible, it really just comes down to making sure the ball motion is, is absolutely perfect so that when you are hitting the pocket, you're striking. So three frames to go. Holmes with a 23-point lead. You know what I'm going to say next. A strike here. Almost essential. Pretty good right there. He fed it to the right spot. Ball picked up perfectly. Ten back for him. Yeah, this is just an absolute classy shot here by Thomas. That ball set right up and just drilled right through the 8-9. You can't throw it any better. He's going to need a little help from Barnes, though. Essentially, he only needs one strike in the next three frames while staying clean with good count, and he'll push USA's total to 7-1. to one. Boy, he got a handful of that one, didn't he, Darren? You got to think he made a move on that one because I'm thinking earlier in the match that one would have went high. Absolutely, and, and that's how fast the lanes are tradition. You look at that. Look at how he got on that ball. He really lifted up on it, really said, I'm going to make this ball set up and hook and go through the pins. And that, that's just years and years of experience for him to be able to make those instinctual moves and then execute when the moment calls for it. Yeah. Nice break for Thomas there. That was a must-strike situation. and He can't afford to miss in the 10th either. And he's, I think Europe's still hoping for a, a misplay by Barnes. Five right into the seven, does its job. Thomas just hoping for an opportunity. If you're hoping for Barnes to mistake, to, uh, well, I think you're having a forlorn hope the way he's playing today. Yeah, that'll pretty much do it here. USA is going to go up 7-1 to one in this competition. And uh, Europe's got to figure out what they're going to do. These slow starts just aren't doing it for them. USA is capitalizing every single time. And they just can't afford to miss right now. Testing the waters on the other side. He says it's just fine. This is what we call a really good miss. This ball way left off his hands. and Well, I'll take 10, he says. That's my favorite miss. If you're going to miss, miss by a lot. Seven pins for a tie. Eight. We'll put it away here. Uh-oh. And it's going to be enough. That's enough. He was a little concerned, wasn't he? But in the end, that concern was misplaced. 
Chris would definitely tell you that's not one of his finer shots. Chris Barnes completes the task and the USA just keep on rolling. After that setback in the last match of the afternoon, it is now normal service resumed. The lead is seven.